The Arraignment, Conviction and Imprisonment of Christmas, on St. Thomas Day last, and how he broke out of prison in the holidays and got away, only left his hoary hair and grey beard sticking between two iron bars of a window, with a hue and cry after Christmas, and a letter from Mr. Woodcock, a fellow in Oxford, to a malignant lady in London, and divers passages between the lady and the crier about old Christmas, and what shift he was fain to make to save his life, and great stir to fetch him back again, with divers other witty passages, prepared by Simon Minced Pie for Sicily Plum Porridge, and are to be sold by Ralph Fiddler Chandler at the sign of the Pack of Cards in Mustard Alley in Braun Street, 1645. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Algy Pug, Perth, Western Australia. Lady, I beseech you, for the love of Oxford, hire a crier. I will see him paid for his pains, to cry old father Christmas, and keep him with you, if you can meet with him and stay him, till we come to London, for we expect to be there shortly, and then we will have all things as they were wont, I warrant you. Hold up your spirits, and let not your old friends be lost out of your favour for his sake, who is your ever-servant, Joe Woodcock. Lady, honest crier, I knew thou knewest old Father Christmas. I am sent to thee from an honest scholar of Oxford that hath given me many a hug and kiss in Christmas time, when we have been merry, to cry Christmas, for they hear he has gone from hence, and that we have lost the poor old man. You know what marks he hath, and how to cry him. Crier, who shall pay me for my pains? Lady, your old friend, Mr. Woodcock of Oxford, wilt thou take his word? Crier, I will cry him, I warrant you, through the city and country, and it shall go hard, but I will find him out. I can partly guess who can tell some news of him, if any people in England can, for I am acquainted with all his familiar friends. Trust me in this business, I will bring you word within few days. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Any man or woman, whether popish or prolatical, superstitious or judaical, or what person soever, of any tribe or truly bub, that can give any knowledge or tell any tidings of an old, 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 very old grey-bearded gentleman called Christmas who was wont to be a very familiar guest, and visit all sorts of people, both rich and poor, and used to appear in glittering gold, silk and silver in the court, and in all shapes in the theatre in Whitehall, and had ringing feasts and jollity in all places, both in the city and country for his coming. If you went to the temple, you might have found him there at inn and inn, till many a gentleman had outed all the money from his pocket, and after all the butlers found him locked up in their boxes. And in almost every house you might have found him at cards and dice. The very boys and children could have traced him, and the beggars have followed him from place to place, and seen him walking up and down, and in every house roast beef and mutton, pies and plum porridge, and all manner of delicates round about him, and every one saluting Merry Christmas. If you had gone to the Queen's Chapel, you might have found him standing against the wall, and the Papists weeping and beating themselves before him, and kissing his hoary head with superstitious tears, in a theatre exceeding all the plays of the Bull, the Fortune, and the Cockpit. For age this hoary-headed man was of great years, and as white as snow, he entered the Romish calendar time out of mind, is old, or very fleer, as Father Methuselah was, one that looked fresh in the bishop's time, though therefore made him pine away ever since, 
He was full and fat as any dumb doctor of them all. He looked under the consecrated lawn sleeves as big as bull beef, just like Bacchus upon a tun of wine, when the grapes hang shaking about his ears. But since the catalike liquor is taken away from him, he is much wasted, so that he hath looked very thin and ill of late. But the wanton women that are so mad after him do not know how he is metamorphized, so that he is not now like himself, but rather like Jack Alent. But yet some other marks that you may know him by is that the wanton women dote after him. He helped them to so many new gowns, hats, and handkerchiefs, and other fine knacks, of which he hath a pack on his back, in which is good store of all sorts, besides the fine knacks that he got out of their husband's pockets for household provisions for him. He got prentices, servants, and scholars many play days, and therefore was well beloved by them also, and made all merry with bagpipes, fiddles, and other musics, gigs, dances, and mummings, yea, the young people had more merry days and hours before him whilst he stayed, which was in some houses twelve days, in some twenty, in some more, in some less, than in all a year again. All you, therefore, that by your diligent inquiry can tell me any tidings of this old man called Christmas, and tell me where he may be met withal, whether in any of your streets or elsewhere, though in never so straightened a place, in an apple-woman's stall or grocer's currant tub, in a cook's oven or the maid's porridge pot, or crept into some corner of a translator's shop, where the cobbler was wont so merrily to chaunt his carols. Whosoever can tell what is become of him, or where he may be found, let them bring him again into England to the crier, and they shall have a benediction from the Pope, a hundred oaths from the cavaliers, forty kisses from the wanton wenches, and be made pursuivant to the next archbishop. Malignants will send him a piece of brawn, and every prentice boy will give him his point of wine next holy Thursday. The good wives will keep him in some corner of their mince pies, and the new Nuncio Island will return him to be canonized the next reformation of the calendar. And so, Pope, save Christmas! Cryer Lady, I am come to tell you what return I can make of the crying of old Father Christmas, which I have done, and I am now here to give you an answer. Lady. Well said, honest crier. Mr. Woodcock will remember you for it. Crier. The poor old man upon St. Thomas his day was arraigned, condemned, and after conviction cast into prison amongst the king's soldiers fearing to be hanged, or some other execution to be done upon him, and got out at so narrow a passage between two iron bars of a window, that nothing but onely his old grey beard and hoary hair of his head stuck there, but nothing else to be seen of him. And, if you will have that, compound for it, lest it be sold among the sequestered goods, or burnt with the next popish pictures by the hand of the hangman." Lady, but his old, old, good old Christmas gone, nothing but the hair of his good, grave old head and beard left. Well, I will have that, seeing I cannot have more of him, one lock whereof will serve Mr. Woodcock for a token. But what is the event of his departure? Crier, the poor are sorry for it, for they go to every door a-begging as they were wont to do. Good missus, somewhat against this good time. But time was transformed. Away, be gone. Here is not for you. And so they, instead of going to the alehouse to be drunk, were fain to work all the holidays. The scholars came into the hall, where their hungry stomachs had thought to have found good brawn and Christmas pies, roast beef and plum porridge. But no such matter. Away, ye profane! These are superstitious meats. Your stomachs must be fed with wholesome doctrine. Alas, 
poor tallow-faced chandlers, I met them mourning through the streets, and complaining that they could get no vent for their mustard for want of brawn. Lady, well, if ever the Catholics or bishops rule again in England, they will set the church doors open on Christmas Day, and we shall have mass at the high altar, as was used when the day was first instituted, and not have the Holy Eucharist barred out of school, as schoolboys do their masters against the festival. What? Shall we have our mouths shut to welcome old Christmas? No, no, bid him come by night over the Thames, and we will have a back door open to let him in. I will myself give him his diet for one year, to try his fortune this time twelve months. It may prove better. Notes Note 1. Chillybubs. This word has an indefinite meaning. Sometimes it is synonymous with entrails, as tripes and trullybubs. Sometimes it is meant for something very trifling, and then is occasionally spelt trillybubs. Why introduced here, no one can tell. Note 2. This Saturnalia of barring out the schoolmaster at Christmas, just before breaking up, was in use certainly as late as 1888. End of the Arraignment of Christmas